The profit stories, profit stories are amazing, are amazing. We like to hear the profit stories, profit stories. We like to hear the profit stories, profit stories. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum assalam. How are you, children? Alhamdulillah. We are fine. We like to hear profit stories from you. Okay, mashallah. That's very good. The stories of the prophet are important for all Muslims. Inshallah, today we will learn about the story of Prophet Yusuf, peace be upon him. Are you ready for that? Yes. Okay, let's start. Bismillah. Prophet Yusuf, peace be upon him, known as Joseph in English, was one of the twelve sons of Prophet Yaqub, peace be upon him. His mother's name was Rahel, peace be upon her, in English, known as Rachel. Prophet Yusuf and his mother were the most beautiful people in the earth. He had a younger brother named Benjamin, in English, known as Benjamin. Because of their best qualities, their father loved them more than their other children and protected them from the evil. This made the other children very jealous of them. One day, Yusuf peace be upon him told his father about a dream that he had seen. The sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down before him. His father, Prophet Yaqub peace be upon him, understood the meaning of that dream. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would choose him as a prophet and gave him a special power. He was well aware of the jealousy of Prophet Yusuf's stepbrothers. So, he warned Yusuf, peace be upon him, not to tell his dream to his brothers. Prophet Yusuf, peace be upon him, didn't tell his brothers about his dream. But day by day, their jealousy got more extreme. So when did they decide to kill Prophet Yusuf, alayhi wa When Yusuf, peace be upon him, was 18 years old, their brother sat down to discuss what to do with Yusuf, peace be upon him. Let's kill Yusuf. Our father loved him most. Don't kill him. If you must do, throw him down to the bottom of the well. And he will be picked up by some travelers and take him to them to a distant land. As their plan, they asked their father, Prophet Yaqub, peace be upon him. Father, why don't you trust us with Yusuf? Let him come with us to enjoy. Who will take care of him? Prophet Yaqub, peace be upon him, said that he was scared to leave Yusuf, peace be upon him, with them. If they were careless, a wolf might come and kill him. We are strong enough to protect him, otherwise we would be the loser. Finally, they convinced their father to take Yusuf, peace be upon him, with them. As their plan, they took him to the well. After they removed his shirt, they threw him into the deep well. Poor Yusuf, peace be upon him, cried to save him. But their cruel hearts did not save him. They left him alone in that well. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept Prophet Yusuf, peace be upon him, safe in that well. On the way, they killed a sheep and soaked Yusuf's shirt in its blood. Before they returned home, they took an oath to keep their secret. At night when they went back to their father, they started to cry. Prophet Yaqub, peace be upon him, asked them what happened, and they answered with crying. Father, we are racing and left Yusuf with our stuff. Then a wolf came and ate him. Please believe us, we are telling the truth. They showed his shirt with the false blood. Did Prophet Yusuf's father, Yaqub realize that they were lying? I think he did because he was the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, he realized that Prophet Yusuf's stepbrothers were telling a lie. Their father held the shirt and asked them how come the wolf ate his son without tearing his shirt. Their faces turned red. But they swore by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they were telling the truth. Prophet Yaqub's eyes were filled with tears and he told them that they were lying 
but he would keep patience because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could help him and his son. In the dark well, young Yusuf was scared and asked forgiveness from his creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and surrendered himself to the will of his Lord. Next day, a caravan was going to Egypt. On the way, they stopped by the well for water. One of the men lowered his bucket and Prophet Yusuf peace upon him held the rope. When the men saw a young boy, he shouted to his people. Give me a hand, look like I found the real treasure in the well. They helped him to pull him out of the well. They saw a handsome, beautiful, healthy young boy with an angelic smile. They immediately felt that if they sold him as a slave, they could make lots of money. So right away they chained him and took him to Egypt with them, far away from his homeland of Canaan. All over the Egyptian city, the news spread that an unusual, handsome, healthy young slave was on sale. People gathered by the hundreds at the slave market. Many rich people tried to buy him, but the noble chief minister Aziz of Egypt won the bid and took Yusuf peace upon him to his mansion. He told his wife Zulaika to be good to him and that maybe they should adopt him as their son. This way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established Yusuf peace be upon him in one of the ruling class of Egypt. The chief minister told his men to remove the chain from his feet and told Yusuf peace be upon him not to break his trust. Yusuf peace be upon him thanked him and promised to be truthful. He thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over and over for his new life, but he very much missed his parents and his little brother Benjamin. The chief minister's wife was very happy with Yusuf peace be upon him for his charming behavior and manners. The people of the town referred to him as one of the most attractive men that they ever seen. They even wrote a poem about him. He was always humble and polite to everyone. By the age of 20, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him special wisdom and knowledge. His master put him in charge of his household and treated him as a son. But his master's wife, Zulaika, got evil feeling for Yusuf, peace be upon him. Her evil feelings tried to win Prophet Yusuf's heart, but she failed. One day, Shaitan inspired her to close the door when Prophet Yusuf came in the room and invited him to do the evil act. It was the test for Yusuf, peace be upon him, because she was a very beautiful woman in the town. He won the test and refused her for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him not to betray his master and away from any evil act. So he ran to the door to escape, but she ran after him and held his shirt. Because she kept on tugging, she tore his shirt and held the torn piece in her hand. After opening the door, her husband saw them in that position. Immediately, she changed her tone and blamed Yusuf peace upon him for that situation. She falsely claimed that Prophet Yusuf peace upon him attacked her, forcefully and requested her husband to punish him. What? She's lying? She must be a bad woman. But Prophet Yusuf peace be upon him denied her complaint and said to his master that she had feelings for him. The household member explained if his shirt was torn from the front, she was telling the truth. But if their shirt was torn from the back, he was telling the truth. The husband realized that his wife was telling the lie and Prophet Yusuf was innocent. He let Yusuf peace be upon him go and told his wife to ask forgiveness from Yusuf peace be upon him. The story was spread everywhere by the house of the servant. People started to gossip. To explain her situation, she invited several rich women for a special dinner. She told them that she had evil feelings about Yusuf peace be upon him and that feeling she had for a long time. After finishing their dinner, the guests began cutting their fruit with a knife. At that moment, she called Yusuf peace be upon him to come in the dining room. Everybody was surprised to see the most beautiful man in the earth. They were so surprised that they accidentally cut their palm while cutting their fruits. They could not believe that he was a real human being. 
everyone had the same kind of evil feeling to get him. Then Zulaika told them for this man they were blaming her. She told them, you cut your hands to see his beauty. Their evil feelings wanted to get him. Zulaika threatened him that if he did not obey her, he had to go to jail. But Prophet Yusuf peace be upon him did not obey her. He preferred that he went to jail. So she convinced her husband to send him to prison to save her honor. The chief minister knew that Yusuf peace be upon him was innocent, but he had no choice. So he sent him to prison even though he felt very bad for him. At the same time, he was 20 years old. How could they send such an innocent person to prison? Because they were really bad people. That was another test for him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. During that period, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him an extraordinary gift. He could understand the meaning of dreams. In the prison, he had two prisoners with him. They both saw different dreams. They asked the meaning of their dream from Yusuf peace be upon him. One of the prisoners dream was I was carrying the bread on my head and the bird was eating the bread from the head. Another prisoner's dream was I was making wine. First, Yusuf peace be upon him invited them to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to believe him as the one and only God. It was the same religion that Prophet Ibrahim, Ishaq, and Yaqub, peace be upon them, followed. Then he told the first prisoner, he would be crucified, and the birds would eat from his head. Then he told the other prisoner, that he would be released, and he would serve his wine to the king. He requested that prisoner to mention him about the king, that he was innocent. The dreams came true. The first person was crucified, and the second person was released, and worked for the king. But Saitan made him forget to mention Prophet Yusuf's name to the king. So Yusuf peace be upon him was in the prison for a few more years. But he had patience and prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After nine years, the king saw a dream. Seven fat cows came out of the river, followed by seven skinny cows. The seven skinny cows ate the seven fat ones. The king was terrified. Then the king saw seven grains that were green, and then another seven grains that were dry. He asked his entire official to explain the meaning of the dream, but no one could tell the meaning. Suddenly, the old prisoner remembered Yusuf peace upon him, who told the meaning of his dream in the prison. He ran to the king to tell about Yusuf peace upon him and recommended him he was the right person to tell the meaning of his dream. The king sent him to Yusuf peace upon him to get the meaning. He explained the dream. There would be seven years of good harvest. During that time, the excess food should be saved. The next seven years would be a bad drought. No food would grow. This time, the saved extra food could be used. He also advised to save some grain for seeds to harvest after the drought. He also said, after seven years of drought, there would be lots of rain. That rain could be used for grape and olive trees to fulfill their juice and oil. After hearing that, the king was amazed. He commanded his people to release Yusuf peace be upon him at once. But Prophet Yusuf refused to leave the prison unless the king proved him innocent. The king ordered to bring Aziz's wife and all the ladies who cut their hands. They felt ashamed of what they had in their mind and felt sorry to send an innocent man to prison. Aziz's wife was very sorry for what she had done. She declared Yusuf peace upon him as innocent and she was the guilty one. After that, Zulaika's story ends there. Why does her story is end there? There are many made-up folk stories about her. According to the Quran and Hadith, 
No story about her was accepted. So we have to end her story here. Assalamu alaikum. The copyright of this product belongs to Ikra Cartoon Network. We are trying to build a unique and very educational Islamic cartoon channel. Please do not copy and upload it to your channel as it will hurt us and it would be haram for you. If you think that we are doing an excellent job for our kids, please join our Dawah project. We really need your help spiritually and financially. Please donate generously. It would be Sadaqa Zaria for you. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you continuous reward even after your death. You can donate by visiting our website, ikracartoon.com. New life started for Prophet Yusuf, peace be upon him. The king recognized his noble qualities and vast knowledge. He wanted to know from Yusuf, peace be upon him, how they could protect themselves from the long drought. Prophet Yusuf offered the king to give him full control over all of the storage houses of Egypt, and he could protect them with the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him. So he became the finance minister of Egypt, which was in a very noble position. The king was happy for his proposal and gave full control over all of the storage houses. In that miracle way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Prophet Yusuf peace upon him the full power in the land of Egypt. Time went by really fast. The first seven good years, he had full control over the farming and storage of the crops. Then the drought started for next seven years everywhere including Prophet Yusuf's homeland, Canaan. Prophet Yusuf advised the king to sell some of their extra reserved grain to the needy nations at a fair price. The king agreed and the good news spread all over the region. Prophet Yaqub peace upon him sent all of his sons except Benjamin to Egypt to purchase some food. Prophet Yusuf peace be upon him heard that ten brothers came from Canaan and they could not speak the Egyptian language. Prophet Yusuf peace be upon him immediately recognized his stepbrothers, but they did not know him. They introduced themselves as the children of noble Prophet Yaqub peace be upon him, and altogether they were eleven brothers. Their youngest brother was with their old father. On hearing this, his heart filled with tears. He missed his parents and brother for a long time. After giving them their supplies, he told them that if they were truthful, to bring their youngest brother next time, and he would treat them good. But if they did not bring him, they were not allowed to come and to get any supplies next time. They said, We shall try to get permission from our father and we will do that. Yusuf peace be upon him ordered his servants to secretly put the money that they had paid for their supplies into one of the supply bags so that they could be grateful and could come back. The ten brothers returned to their father and said, If we don't take our brothers with us next time, no more food for us. Please send him with us, we shall protect him. Prophet Yaqub peace be upon him told them, that he could not trust them for Benjamin's protection because they could not protect Yusuf peace be upon him. He only depended on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection and mercy. So, what happened to the money that Prophet Yusuf salam, secretly put into their supplies? Later, when they opened their bag, they were surprised to find their money was back. They rushed to their father and said, Look father, the officer returned our money. He will not harm our brothers. He would be good for us. But Prophet Yaqub peace be upon him refused to send Benjamin with them. After some time when they had no more food, Yaqub peace be upon him asked them to travel to Egypt for more. They reminded him that they could not return without Benjamin. Finally, Yaqub peace be upon him agreed and got promise in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from them that they would bring him back safely. He also advised them to enter the city through different gates. 
Yaqub, peace be upon him, prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their safety. In their long journey to Egypt, they took good care of Benjamin, and they entered the city from different gates. Finally, they met Yusuf, peace be upon him. He immediately recognized his brother Benjamin and arranged for all the brothers to take a rest at night. When everybody was asleep, he called his brother Benjamin to talk. Then, Yusuf Pizipanim introduced himself as his lost brother. After many years of separation, their heart melted. Their eyes filled with tears of joy and hugged one another. But they decided to keep it a secret from their stepbrothers. The next day, while all the brothers were getting their bag with food, Yusuf Pizipanim ordered one of his people to place the king's golden bull in Benjamin's bag. When the youngest brother was ready to leave, the soldiers closed the gates and shouted, You travelers are thieves! The brothers were surprised and asked, What have you lost? One of the soldiers said, The king's golden bull. Another person said, Who could find that he will get the camel load reward? The brother said, By Allah, we did not come to do evil job in this country. We are not thieves. They asked, What punishment you will get if you tell a lie? The brother said, According to our law, whoever still became a slave to the owner of the property. The soldier said, Okay, we shall apply your law instead of Egyptian law. Yusuf Pizibhanim was happy with that because by Egyptian law, he could not keep his brother with him. The soldiers started searching one by one out of all of the brothers' bags. Finally, they found the golden bull in Benjamin's bag. His brothers shouted. There is no surprise he steal. Before his brother also used to steal as well. It's sad how they could say something bad about Prophet Yusuf Salam. Hearing this, Prophet Yusuf peace be upon him became quiet and he thought that they were still bad people. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best. Then they remembered their promise that they did to their father and requested to Yusuf peace be upon him. Oh master, his father is very old man. Take one of us, let him go. We see you are a good man. He refused their offer and said that it would not be the right thing to do. When they did not see any hope, all of the brothers went to a side and started to talk among themselves. Their eldest brother was very worried and told the others, We promise our father in the name of Allah not to lose him, so I'll not go back without his permission or whatever Allah wills for me. So he stayed behind and the other brothers went back to their father. Yaqub peace be upon him. In the meantime, Yusuf Pizipanim kept Benjamin in his house as a guest. Benjamin was happy that the oldest brother stayed behind for him because he was a good brother among the others. This time, Yusuf Pizipanim tried to test their feelings and sincerity about Benjamin. He wanted to see if they would come back for the two brothers that they had left. All of the nine brothers returned to their father and said to him, Father, your son has stolen from the king's property. But we did not see him to steal. We are telling the truth. You can ask others from the caravan. After hearing that, their father, Prophet Yaqub's heart filled with sorrow and tears were dropping from his eyes. He kept patience and did not lose hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wished that maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would return all of his children. He was deeply hurt and cried all the time for his beloved lost son Yusuf and his other sons. Within a few days, he lost his sight and became blind. He became blind? He must have loved his children very much. Yes, he truly did love them. His other sons tried to give him comfort, but nothing helped him. He requested them to go back to Egypt and search for Yusuf peace be upon him and his brother because his heart was telling him his son Yusuf peace be upon him was still alive. By that time, their food supply had also finished. 
all the brothers became very poor and depressed. They came to Egypt to find their big brother. All together they met Yusuf Pizipanim and informed him that their family was in a very hard condition. They begged him for more food because they did not have enough money to buy it. In that heartbreaking moment, he asked them what they did to their brother Yusuf and Benjamin. They were shocked to hear that. They knew that no one knew about their act to Yusuf peace be upon him besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala themselves and Yusuf himself. They right away realized that one person in front of them was their brother Yusuf peace be upon them. Are you Yusuf? Prophet Yusuf peace be upon him confirmed that he was Yusuf and reminded them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives reward to those who keep patience. All of the brothers became shamed for their big sin and announced that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Prophet Yusuf peace be upon him the highest position than all of them. Then they asked pardon from him. Yusuf peace be upon him pardoned them and prayed for them to get forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their sin. And they hugged Yusuf peace be upon him with joy. So did Prophet Yusuf alayhi wasallam go back to his father? No, because he had a very big responsibility in Egypt. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted him to stay there and brought all of his family members to Egypt. So he advised his brothers to take his shirt to his father. They started their journey back to Canaan. On the other hand, Prophet Yaqub peace upon him was in his room crying for his sons. Suddenly, he felt good and came out of his room. His face glowed with a beautiful smile. He told others that he could smell Yusuf peace upon him in the air. Their family members told him that he was wrong, but the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got good news in advance. When the caravan came, one of his sons put Yusuf's shirt on his face. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured his eyes right away. He confirmed everyone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed this to him before. All of the sons requested to ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their big sin. Then they asked forgiveness to the most merciful and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The brothers said that Yusuf peace upon him requested Prophet Yaqub peace upon him to move to Egypt with his whole family. They met Yusuf peace upon him outside of the town. Prophet Yusuf and Yaqub peace upon them hugged each other with joy. Prophet Yusuf took them to the city. When he sat on the throne next to his parents, everyone bowed to him in prostration. He reminded his father of the dream that he saw at a very young age. That was the explanation of the dream. He was very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his new life and brought his family to him. He prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep him as a Muslim during his death and give him paradise hereafter. At the age of 110, he died in Egypt. We don't know where he was buried, but some scholars say that after his death, he was mummified and placed in a coffin and later buried besides his forefather at Palestine. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best. This is the end of our prophet story for today. Inshallah next time we will learn another beautiful story of the prophets. If you like our videos, to support Ikra Cartoon, please share and subscribe to our channel.